What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already hit that like button, also hit that subscribe button. In this video, what I'm gonna be showing you is what I recommend you carry in your vehicle, whether it's just everyday driving or you're getting ready for a long road trip. Uh, these are some things that I carry and I would suggest that you carry also. That way you're prepared for any situation you might run across while driving, whether you, know, like, whether you be on a road trip or whatever. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you first on my Forerunner here, and then we're gonna, um, my daily driver family vehicle, uh, we're gonna get it set up a little bit better, needs a little bit more attention. So let's get started. The first item I wanna go over is something that I don't think many people carry in their vehicle, and I can't think of a worse situation where if your car catches on fire or if you see another vehicle on fire is fire extinguishers okay I like to carry two of them um, I have used fire extinguishers in the past I've actually put out two different car fires uh, with some fire extinguishers so carry these um, you know I, I carry mine in this little um, tool tote here so I can just pop the rear hatch come around here and grab them really quick and you want to make sure that they are fully charged and I've seen other videos where people just sit there and they didn't have a fire extinguisher or any way to put out a fire and their whole car gets completely engulfed in flames. But at the first sign of trouble, you can knock that fire out and save yourself a lot of money and hassle. Next thing is a uh, first aid kit. Now I've put mine in an old, this was a actually a tank bag when I had a sport bike and this bag works really great. And I've put a lot more stuff than just the average uh, first aid kit. Got all kinds of things in here. Um, got band-aids, bandages, medicine. Uh, this stuff here called New Skin. It's basically like a liquid bandage that you can put on a cut. It's really good for like flexible um, you know, wounds that you have like in a flexible area where a band-aid can't work. Um, got some um, antibacterial spray. I uh, got some uh, off spray, got, a, got some antibiotic ointment, band-aids underneath there, all kinds of pads, um, some aspirin, wet wipes, uh, toilet paper. You know, you never know if you're on a road trip, emergency happens, you need to go and stop into a bathroom. They don't have toilet paper. Uh, you got some there. I also like to carry some duct tape, which this one's about out. Also carry some another roll of duct tape right over here. Um, pair of scissors. Also like to carry some per, uh, hydrogen peroxide. I keep it in a bag just in case it were to start leaking. I also keep the toilet paper in a bag in case something were to leak. It doesn't ruin my toilet paper. Some gloves just in case you or need to help someone out and they're bleeding. Put on some gloves for, for your protection and theirs. So just go ahead. I'm no, um, you know, first aid responder or anything, but I just like to be prepared for as many situations as I can. So um, get yourself a good first aid kit ready. You never know if you or someone else might need some some type of minor medical attention. Next up is a good pair of gloves. Um, I like these. I get these at Lowe's. Um, can't remember how much they cost. They're not very expensive. But what I like about them is one, they have this rubber grip and it really protects your hands in case you touch something hot. And then also just keeps you, uh, your hands from getting dirty. I use them all the time. You can rewash them, but whether you're about to change a tire, a battery, fan belt, whatever, you'll, you'll love having a, a pair of, of nice gloves. And then in addition to that, I would recommend a pair of clear safety glasses, you know, in just case you have to Something might accidentally spray in your eye or just get in your eye if you're needing to get underneath the vehicle for a moment, something fall into your eye. Um, just a good idea to have a good pair of clear safety glasses. I like these uh, ones that made by 3M. So the two most common things that may happen to you that will kind of become a big inconvenience for you if you're not prepared for it is one, a flat tire and two, a dead battery. You coming out from um, a hotel or a restaurant or whatever event, or if you're just leaving for work in the morning, whatever the situation is, you either have a flat tire or a dead battery. Uh, these can 
you know, really inconvenience you, but if you're prepared for it and have these tools, it'll be a minor inconvenience. So first let's cover if you have a flat tire. So there's several things you can do if you have a flat tire, but first let's just go over if you have to change uh, your tire and put on your spare. Always wanna make sure you have a good spare ready to go that's aired up and in good condition. And then also you wanna make sure you have the tools. Like in my Cayenne here, we have a jack and this also has other tools over here. And as you can see, I've already pl put in a uh, plug kit over here. We'll get to that in a moment. But underneath, underneath this, there's also an air compressor. But you wanna make sure you have the socket and the, the lug wrench and everything that you need to change that tire. You know, a lot of the factory uh, jacks and the, the tool that would hook up to this to jack it up, they're often stored underneath the hood, so they're very hot. That's why you would need those gloves, come in handy then. Um, but one thing I like to carry is a little bottle jack like this. And if you're gonna carry a bottle jack that has like, or even at this jack, like the factory jack has this small foot plate, I would re recommend carrying a good, solid uh, piece of wood that you can put underneath that jack to give it a bigger footprint. And also if you're, you know, in the gravel or grass or sand or something, you can kind of manipulate it to get that jack nice and, and um, firm, but also going straight up. And one thing I like about these little bottle jacks, they got this, you know, little twist head here where you can kind of save some time. And then you start um, just, you know, jacking it up. They're really strong. They're very dependable. But, um, you know, the bad thing about these, these hydraulic jacks, they can fail and drop. Whereas opposed to this is just, there's no hydraulics, it's, it's mechanical. So, so just be aware of that. So don't get underneath the vehicle with only a hydraulic jack um, supporting it. So before we can change the spare with our tools to change the lug nuts, we have to be able to remove the spare. And one thing that I saw when I, I got this uh, vehicle is that I don't, I, it, it's, it was missing some hardware to remove the spare tire. So I need a 13 millimeter right here. And there's nothing worse than trying to, you know, find that out while you're on the side of the road or in a parking lot. So I know now I need to keep me a 13 millimeter and a ratchet to be able to remove that. And as well, like on my Forerunner, for example, I lost all the hardware, the original um, material or linkages to operate that jack. But what I do need is a 3 8 extension. So I just bought a 3 8 extension real long one that I can put in here and uh, remove my spare tire. So now I can use a ratchet or um, an impact. And yes, I do keep impacts in my vehicle. And now I can lower my spare. So now I have the spares out of both of my vehicles and every vehicle is gonna be different. Like on my 4Runner, I have a full size spare that I can put in rotation as I rotate my tires, and you should if you do have a full-size spare. So I'm gonna clean this one off and rotate these tires, but as you can see on my Cayenne, it's a special type of, uh, you know, temporary tire. As you can see it's not nearly as tall. What happens is this is called a Space Saver, or Space Master is the uh, brand. And I can only run up to 50 miles per hour with this, but when I inflate it, it's going to bring it up to the proper diameter. And so with this vehicle, if I was in a, you know, in a bind, I'm gonna be reliant on the onboard air compressor uh, that comes with it from the factory. Now these plug into the cigarette lighter. You can buy these. They're super slow. They're really slow. And if this doesn't work, you might as well, um, you're, you're gonna be pretty much out of luck from using that spare tire. But if you're keeping, you can get by without an air compressor. If you've checked to make sure that your spare tire is good and properly inflated, you wouldn't even need uh, to rely on another air compressor. Now you got the tools, you need to make sure you have your tool that you can actually fit on, on the lugs. And if you don't have this, um, you can get a four-way lug. But what I like to do 
is carry an impact with me. It doesn't have to be a big one like this DCF 900. Um, I also keep uh, this one's, um, the one that came before this, the DCF 899, I keep in the Cayenne and you just want to make sure you have a fresh battery. Like I said, you don't have to have one this big. You can get uh, smaller ones. And I've done um, a video on the uh, DCF 901 that takes the 12 volt battery and it's strong enough to actually remove the lug nuts and it's very compact compared to this. But what you also need to make sure if you're gonna have an impact, make sure you got that socket that fits your lug. And if you don't have the factory tools, you don't have the coin right at the moment to get an impact like this, you could carry like a breaker bar or the cheaper way to do it would be um, to get just like, like a four-way lug wrench. But I like to carry this breaker bar. It's got a ton of leverage. It's gonna make breaking off those lugs super easy, but nothing's gonna be as easy as using this impact. You're pretty much gonna take the hardest part of changing a flat tire and putting on the spare, you've taken the hardest part and just made it into the fastest and easiest part of that job. You know, so changing your spare tire can be quite a bit of a hassle. You know, you gotta get the, um, the spare tire removed and then uh, all that other stuff. But there's one thing I wanna say is that I see all the time when I do see someone changing uh, their flat tire, they will do it in a very dangerous spot. Man, don't risk your life um, you know, by just doing it wherever it is. Like people try to avoid messing up their wheel. And, um, you know, everybody calls these rims. Um, actually, the, technically this is a wheel and that's the tire and the rim is part of the, uh, part of the wheel, okay? But people will try to avoid damaging their wheel um, and they'll change their tire in a very dangerous spot. But people will change their uh, spare change their tire in a bad situation where they're very close to you know to traffic still moving um, I'd much rather drive a little further or more off the road or whatever to get myself in the safest spot because I don't really care about messing up that wheel it can be replaced so even like say you're on a bridge or just in a bad neighborhood or whatever and just continue to drive very slowly with your caution lights on, very slowly, maybe on the side of the road, but get into a safe spot before trying to change that, that spare. But oftentimes you don't really even need to change the tire. You may be able to uh, repair the tire and inflate it. And let's go over that now. You know, if you're lucky and you come out and your tire is flat, chances are you probably have a nail or something that has gotten into it somewhere. And so that's when you can just plug it and inflate the tire and continue to drive. Um, so I always carry with me and I recommend you carry a tire plug kit. Now you'll see a lot in the comments, I'm sure people will say, oh, patch is the only way to go. I have plugged tires. I've never had a problem with it. Hundreds, if not a thousand tires I've plugged and never had an issue. Is a patch better? Yeah, maybe, um, but we're talking about in a in a situation where um you know you don't you're not at a shop you have to get get yourself out of a bind on the road somewhere so carry a nice um, plug kit i've done a video on this i'll put a link in the description it's very easy now to inflate the tire after you've found the nail and removed it one you'll need to carry some pliers we'll get to that in a moment but once you've removed the uh, nail with your pliers, you'll need to inflate the tire. So I always, I always carry, I have this uh, DeWalt boost box. It's an air compressor and booster all in the same. I've done videos on this as well. I'll put a link down in the description. Um, but if you don't have one of these, you can get away with inflating your tire with like a can of fix-a-flat. Now, I don't like this stuff and the tire guy's not gonna like you when it's full of fix-a-flat, but it's better than nothing. So if you could carry a can of fix-a-flat and a tire plug kit, you can get yourself out of some sticky situations. Now, speaking of this um, uh, DeWalt uh, power station with the built-in air compressor, this thing is so much faster than one of those air compressors that you plug into a cigarette lighter. I want to say this was around $300. They've probably gone up since. I've had this for years. But like I said, it also has a built-in 
uh, boost box so you can boost off your car but they sell these items separately you could buy just a designated little air compressor plugs into your cigarette lighter and then you can also buy there's pretty little power stations that are a lot more compact and lightweight uh, that will um, some of them will plug into your cigarette lighter to boost off your uh, battery I've never had one of those or used one of those but this thing works great and what's cool about it it's also got some USB ports as well as some um, you know 110 outlets down here as well the drawback to this is that you need to make sure that you keep it charged up um, I'll go months between charges and it and it does great um, basically it's just another little 12 volt battery that's in there so um, it's not going to last forever, but I've had this for several years now, two or three years at this point, and it's still working great. Jumper cables. We can't talk about this without having a good set of good old-fashioned jumper cables, tried and true. Make sure they're in good condition. And when you go to hook up a um, battery to another vehicle, um, someone has helped you out, hook up the positives first, then the grounds. And then when you unhook it, um, you want to unhook the grounds first and then the positives. Now let's talk about tools uh, that you should carry. I carry quite a bit, but you should probably at least just carry um, some basic tools. Now let's go over what those tools you need. Um, first of all, I, I, got a, I like carrying them in these bags, so I have a bunch of smaller bags to kind of organize what tools um, are in the bags, and then I put it all in this one big bag right here. Now first, in no particular order, let's open this up and I have just some various tools here like Allen wrenches got a razor blade knife some uh, electrical tape got a little uh, brush here in case you need to clean off some battery terminals also have like a little telescoping telescoping magnet um, tool in case you drop a bolt into a nut into a weird situation you can extract it with that um, a mirror where you can find um, you know particular problems whether it be a coolant leak and speaking of coolant leaks and electrical tape like one time I had a little pinhole leak form on my Jeep uh, CJ7 on the coolant hose the upper coolant hose I was smelling it and then I saw coolant leaking out by the side of the fender and I pulled over let it cool off and then I temporarily fixed it by just wrapping a lot of electrical tape around it and I was shocked at how long it lasted. I actually forgot about it for weeks. Uh, went, I went ahead and went to work and just kind of forgot about it, but um, you want to replace that hose. But that, that kind of just got me out of a sticky situation. It was just a really little bitty pinhole spraying out coolant as that hose was hot. Um, another thing I got here that I would suggest carrying is you know an assortment of screwdrivers. They don't have to be really nice screwdrivers, but you know anything from little short ones, Phillips flatheads, different lengths. Even got some little uh, tried and true little flatheads in here. And not only will this, you know, come in handy if you have a problem with your car or something, but we've been on like vacation at times, and um, little things like either my pliers or screwdrivers have come in handy uh, for fixing other little things. Next is an assortment of wrenches, um, you know, depending on your vehicle, mostly probably going to need metric most likely, but I do carry some standard in here. So you want to make sure you're going from at least eight um, millimeter on up through probably to at least about, you know, a 17 or 18 or 19. And then I carry um, some various size ratchets from quarter inch, three eighths up to a half inch all kinds of extensions, adapters, and things like that. And also in here, I like these uh, socket trays. I have, you know, quarter inch. These are all metric, because um, on this vehicle, I don't have, there's nothing standard um, size on this vehicle. But another thing that I like, and I've done a video on this as well, is this little tool kit here uh, from VIM. You have this little ratchet here. You have some little sockets here going from five millimeter on up to 10 millimeter. And what's cool about it is you have all types of Torx bits, Allen heads, flat heads, just all spline, all kinds of different, um, anything you could imagine you're gonna run into. And plus you have like a little uh, drive tool here 
and you can fit this to make like a T-handle. This is also a ratchet. It's a very versatile, very handy little uh, tool kit that I often use when I'm just when I'm working on uh, cars, mowers, or whatever. And last and definitely not least is a good set of pliers. I have everything from channel locks to just regular um, pliers here, um, cut off wires, needle nose, uh, various sizes and styles. Um, very, very handy. Pliers are will, will get you out of a, a lot of situations. Like say you had to replace a um, coolant hose and you need to remove those clamps. A lot of them are those compression clamps and that's where you're gonna wish you had a good set of pliers on hand. Next up is a good flashlight. I carry one of these um, with me everywhere. I got one in each vehicle. And I use these a lot for just working on stuff. It's got this magnet base. You can just set it in different spots. It's super, super bright, um, but very durable. Got this little clip here. I don't carry this on me all the time, but I do keep one uh, in the console of each vehicle. And I will, the battery lasts a long time, but just every once in a while, I'll just make sure charge it up as I'm driving. And this little light, this little button here will be red and turns green when it's fully charged. And then also it does have the end where it can screw out, screw out. And if you ever did have to replace the battery, you can replace it here. So this is, this is like my best, my most favorite flashlight ever. Um, I've tried a bunch of them and the durability and everything of these, these are just un, unbeatable. And it's just so bright and, and being compact with that magnet base, you can just put it in so many different spots. Whether you're working underneath the hood or need you know need light concentrated in a certain spot, you can you can always find a place uh, for this light to provide the light that you need. And if you do decide to carry some impacts and just go ahead and throw in one of your uh, chargers, if you do decide to have the impacts and you get a power station, and then what you could do is turn on the AC power, plug in down there, and you could start if your battery's low you can charge it off of that. Now, the next thing I would recommend carrying are extra fluids, engine oil, brake fluid, power steering fluid. Keep a um, small, like a quart of each um, of those on hand. And also before you go out on a trip, just make sure your vehicle's in good working order. You don't have any issues with the brakes, check your tires. People often overlook the quality of the tires. Um, but just make sure everything's in good working order. You know, make sure your coolant level is proper. Um, here's a little spot on my 4Runner. I keep the extra engine oil, uh, power steering fluid, some brake fluid, but check all your fluids. And I'll show you real quick. Also have a little spot there where I can keep my jumper cables right there. And I even go through just to remind me, I'm not recommending you do this, but this is just what I do. I write, I, I write down, not only in a book, but just also just to remind me as I pop the hood when I last changed the coolant. I also write on my batteries the last time I changed the battery. These batteries will last about five years. You're lucky if you get much more out of that, but make sure your terminals are nice and clean and tight. Do a good visual inspection on everything. Make sure you don't have any coolant leaks or anything. And check that belt. Make sure it's in good condition, no cracks, things of that nature. So don't neglect that uh, maintenance, guys. You know, like the old saying goes, an ounce worth of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Inside my glove box, I like to keep some fuses, uh, tail lamps, headlight lamps, just anything that might uh, go out. All right, next up guys, you know the old saying uh, when you're having a problem and then more problems happen, when it rains, it pours, okay? This has actually come in handy for me several times. Uh, needing to do something, change a tire or whatever, help someone out, and it's pouring down raining. Um, if you, you know, get you some good rain gear, rain jacket, my wife carries this one uh, in her vehicle. We also have some umbrellas back there. But if you don't have that, don't have a good set um, I've gotten in a out of a bind many times just by having a trash bag poke a hole for your arms and your neck 
and the bigger the bag one that's really long like this 55 gallon drum liner right here makes an awesome raincoat that you can just dispose of and you'll be fully dry except for your head obviously um, but that's just one other thing to consider because chances are it might be raining when it rains it pours as the old saying goes what I would really recommend would be one of those neon yellow rain jackets where if you are doing something, you're very visible and it's, um, you know, instead of like a black um, um, trash bag that's going to cover up and you're going to, you know, especially if it's dark and you're on the side of the road, you're going to need some lights or something, flashing lights or whatever. Like I said, get into the safest pot spot possible if you're going to be doing that type of work, especially at night. If it's, if it's raining and it's at night and I got a brightly colored shirt on, but I'd rather just get soaking wet and let oncoming headlights and everything see me, have someone out there also with a flashlight, you know, to, to you know, signal cars, but have those flashers going. But I'd rather get soaking wet in my brightly lit shirt versus putting a black trash bag or dark rain gear on. All right, guys, let's talk about one other thing that's very likely to happen to you eventually super long traffic jam okay i'm sure you've either been in one or at least you've seen one where you're just like oh my gosh they've probably been in that for hours all right so that's one reason why anytime my tank gets to about a third of a tank i'm looking to fill it up um and you know the joke is your wife always lets your tank you know you get in her car and it's going to be empty but try to get her in the habit of filling it up when it gets down to a third of a tank and do the same for yourself because if you're in traffic jam for hours on end um, you don't want to run out of gas okay you want to maybe keep the heat going if you're in a cold temperature or air conditioner going if you're in hot temperatures and then um, one other thing you want to consider if that happens to you i always like to travel with a cooler bag full of some drinks you know water Especially if you got kids or maybe someone that's a diabetic, you want to have some orange juice, something to boost that sugar up if their sugar gets low, but have plenty of water. Probably some snacks. Again, if you have a type 1 diabetic on board and their blood sugar is getting low, or let's just say you just got through changing your spare tire and your blood sugar is getting low, uh, have you some granola bars or something to snack on. Um, I actually keep some of these in that first aid kit that I showed you earlier. Now I'm down here in Florida, so we don't really have to worry about the cold temperatures, but for you guys up north, um, one, you know, I don't, I hate snow. I hope I never see snow again, but a lot of you guys that are dealing with snow, um, you want to have, you know, blankets and a jacket and the proper uh, footwear. I know probably some of you probably just jump in your car like, okay, I'm just going to run here and uh, go into work and i'll only be in the cold weather for a little while well let's say you run off into a ditch or have a car wreck or something else happens and one you can't get out um it's going to be an hour or two for someone helps you or longer blizzard like my sister lives in uh, cheyenne wyoming and it blizzards are up there all the time it's very dangerous you need to have some you know food drinks um if your car you know runs out of gas or whatever you need to have some blankets and some you know good jacket but really really important some really good footwear that can handle those cold temperatures and that snow that brings us to the another point let's say you have run off into the ditch or someone else has you know i'd recommend carrying some uh, recovery equipment like whether it be chain straps whatever that's up to you um, i've always used chain and um you know you want to avoid that recoil snap back and all that, whether it's um, uh, straps or chain, never attempt to recover someone or don't let someone recover you. Um, if they don't want to have experience and understand the dangers of it, but also don't ever let someone, you know, do the whole, get a running start and, and, and drive and, and put all of a sudden impact tension. I don't care what it is or what they say if hey this is made for that no do not do that um you know let the recovery chain or strap or whatever tighten up and then gradually add the tension and if you are going to use a chain or something i would recommend putting something over the chain in a couple of different sets something heavy like a 
heavy uh, piece of rubber or something just in case it does snap. It does that, that um, bl blanket or mat or something or whatever it is, something heavy um, that will keep it from uh, the chain from snapping back through the windshield. So guys, research that, use extreme caution, um, leave that to professionals on vehicle recovery, okay? Um, one other thing I want to mention before I wrap this video up is, well, there's two other things actually. Um, but one is, you know, there's always tragedies every summer where pets or children especially, it's tragic, get left in vehicles, um, you know, whether by mistake or whatever, and they end up dying from the vehicle getting so hot. Um, it's, it's tragic and it breaks my heart every time I hear that. I have two kids of my own. Um, just a horrible thing. That's why um, one tool that I always carry is a hammer. In case I were to run across a situation like that, I've always seen where, you know, you got 15 dudes around the car and they cannot break the glass on because they don't have a tool to do it. Um, or if you're gonna do that, don't try to go through the windshield. Um, it's extremely hard to get through there. Uh, it's, it's basically safety glass. And, but you can break like one of the side uh, windows a lot easier uh, with the proper tool. Something like this little small sledge would do the trick. And you don't have to sit here and hammer right there on the side. You can just come over and hit right there on the corner and let that glass just shatter. And for all you parents out there, you know, if you're going on a long trip, make sure those kids are entertained with something, whether it be a tablet, coloring book, whatever, something to keep them entertained and just let, not distracting you. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. If I've left anything out, please leave a comment down below of some things that I may have left out. Um, hopefully this helps you guys out and it kind of gives you an idea of what you might need to carry. Maybe you've forgotten some of these things, but uh, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'll have more videos like this coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.